Hey, this is Mehdi with Full Stack Library, and in this video, we'll understand Flexbox basics and terminology to lay out elements on a page. <music> to start using Flexbox, we need first to define a parent or a flex container. Then, this container will include a set of elements, which they are considered as children's or flex items. So Flexbox is a whole module, not a single property. And this module includes a set of properties. And some of them are used for the parent, like this one. And this is a full list of the Flex container properties. And we have also another list of properties meant to be used for Flex items of the children. To distribute elements, Flexbox uses the main axis responsible for laying out items horizontally or vertically. So once we set the main axis to be horizontal, so the items will follow its direction. In the opposite, if we set the main axis to be vertical, so the element will follow its direction and they will lay out vertically. So the distribution of the items rely primarily on the main axis alignment. So when the main axis is horizontal, the main size we have a main size here, and it is considered as the width of the flex items. The width of the flex items. In the opposite, if the main axis is vertical, the main size will be the height of the items. The main axis always has a start and an end. So if it is horizontal, the star will be at the left and the end will be at right, which end up with a right to left. And in the other side, if the main axis is vertical, the star will be at the top and the end will be at the bottom. The star and ends define the directions of the items following the main axis. And to set how the main axis is aligned, we use flex direction property, then a value. If it is set to row, the main axis will be aligned horizontally. And if it is set to colon, the main axis will be aligned vertically. Think of this flex direction right here as the main axis and its value is used to specify the way the main axis will be aligned in order of the items to follow its direction. We can reverse the star and the end. So if it is horizontal, the main star will become right to left instead of left to right. Same if the main axis is vertical, we'll reverse top to bottom to bottom to top. We can achieve that by using the same flex direction property, but instead of row, we'll use row reverse and column reverse for the vertical main axis. By doing that, the items will be reversed because the flex items follow the main axis essentially, and to be accurate, they follow the direction of main start and main end of the main axis. Now let's move to the cross axis, which is always perpendicular to the main axis. And it is used mainly to extend items in the cross dimension. So if the main axis is horizontal, the cross axis will be the opposite, vertical, and it will also have a star and an end. And if it is vertical, the cross star will be at the left and the cross end at the right. The property responsible for how the elements will be managed on cross sides following the cross axis is align items. And if you want, as an example, stretch the flex items to take the entire height of the flex container, we use the value stretch. But don't forget that. To stretch the element to fit the height, the cross axis should be vertical, which defines that we have a cross start at the top and cross end at the bottom. Same for flexing the items horizontally. We have here another example of centering the elements on the cross axis vertically. And so same for the horizontal centering. So what you need to take from this whole story of axis is once you decide using the flex direction on the flex container of the parent, think of it as I am using this property to control the main axis and controlling the way on how the element should be distributed. And the cross axis is always relying on the main axis alignment, which is perpendicular to the main axis. And the property that controls the cross axis is line items. So we have flex direction to control the main axis and the line items to control the cross axis. 